G'day kids and grown-ups. If you are loving watching and learning with Aussie, it would be amazing if you could please do me a really big favour and just tell anybody else that you think might enjoy it too. In the meantime, enjoy this brand new episode and as always, stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today on Storytime with Ozzy, we're gonna read a great book about two young boys that grow up together and then go off to war and fight for their country together. It's called Dreaming Soldiers, and it's by Catherine Bauer and Shane McGrath. Jimmy Watson and John O'Hogan were the best of friends. Look, there they are. Swimming in water holes, camping under the stars, and sharing water bottles kind of friends. They helped the stockmen round up the cattle and chase after the breakaways. Look, that's the cattle. That's the cows. And they're on the horses, chasing after them. When Tilly and Tom, the two smallest Hogans, went missing from the station, Jimmy and Jono rode out together to find and bring them home. Don't you two get into trouble, Mrs. Hogan said whenever Jimmy and Jono went on an adventure. They swung on the high stockyard fences, swishing flies away and watching Mr. Hogan work the cattle dogs. After dinner each night, they sat on the cool veranda, munching Mrs. Hogan's biscuits, or lay by the campfire listening to old Reggie's dreaming stories. There's old Reggie. He's an Aboriginal man telling them dreaming stories. When Jono went off to big school in the city, Jimmy started in the stockyards. The boys missed each other. When Jono came home in the holidays, the pair ran shouting and hooting to the waterhole. Look, they're going fishing. They camped out under the stars and never tired of old Reggie's campfire stories. There's Reggie telling another story. After big school, Jono went away to university. He was away longer now, but always came home for Christmas. Look, there's Jono, and there's Jimmy. They're growing up, they're getting older, but they're still best of mates, aren't they? Jimmy drove with Mr. Hogan to collect Jono from the train. Mr. Hogan told Jimmy to ignore the men who stared as they drove by. Look, all these men, they're not being very kind to the young Aboriginal boy, are they? That's not fair. One year after Christmas, Jono and Jimmy went into town for supplies. Look at all these people. They're soldiers. All these soldiers, they're trying to get people to join the army. They came home to tell everyone they had joined up. We're in the army, Jono told his mother. We're off to fight in the war, Jimmy said. It was going to be a big adventure. They'd travel to far off places and get good pay. How their mothers cried. The mothers were pretty upset because the boys were gonna go off to fight in the army. Don't you two get into trouble, Mrs. Hogan said. The pair sailed for distant lands on a big steel ship. Look, there they are, happy about to go on a big adventure, fighting for their country. The desert was hot, like the one Jimmy knew at home, but it was stonier and not the same rich color he knew so well. Vast oceans, endless skies, and limitless mountain ranges away, the foreign soil exploded under Jimmy's feet. Another ear-splitting whine followed and the ground shook. Lumps of earth flew through the air. It's been an explosion. Jimmy's ears roared as he pulled Jono out of the dirt. Thanks, that was close, Jono said and swung an arm around his friend. Shoulder to shoulder, Jono, Jimmy's big grin flashed. Your mum wouldn't be happy if I let you get into trouble. 
days and nights became one. The long days were for fighting or waiting, for cleaning rifles and mending uniforms, for traveling or catching up on sleep. When not blazing with enemy fire, the cool nights were for restoring Jimmy's courage. They were for pacing under the stars on sentry duty, for laughing with mates and for trying not to think about tomorrow or his sweetheart Gwenny waiting back on the station. Look, there he is, sitting there, trying to get courage up, be brave for another day of fighting tomorrow, trying not to think too much about Gwenny, which is his girlfriend, back at home. The quiet dark was for remembering old Reggie's stories, for thinking of home or for silent unseen tears. Like his ancient sky at home, this foreign sky was big and dark as charcoal, but as hard as Jimmy searched for the Southern Cross, he couldn't find it. He wondered if the same people and creatures from the dreaming stories had shaped this desert too. Look at all the explosions going off into the sky. Sometimes, when the battle was fierce, when the earth burned his throat and when another mate was stretched away, Jimmy wished the ancestral spirits of the dreaming would take him home. But this time was special too, because for the first time, Jimmy was treated just like everyone else. He had a job to do, just like Jono and all the others. So you can see all the soldiers there, and Jimmy and Jono were all equal. They're working together as a team. Didn't matter the color, whether they were Aboriginal boy or a white boy. And when it was over, they came home together. Look at that, Jono and Jimmy walking in the door together to their waiting loved ones, ready with big hugs to welcome them home. This little bit here, it's about Indigenous Australians at war. Ever since the South African Boer War in 1899 to 1902, Indigenous Australians have served alongside white Australian soldiers in every conflict and peacekeeping mission in which Australians have been involved. This is in spite of the fact that during the first half of the 1900s, Indigenous men and women were officially banned from serving and didn't share the same rights as white Australians. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people weren't even recognised as Australian citizens until 1967. Isn't that crazy? They could not vote, they were paid less for the same work, and they were excluded from some schools and hospitals, shops and cinemas. Yet thousands did serve with officials turning a blind eye in order to boost Australia's fighting forces. Many young Indigenous men hoped that war service would help their fight for equality and citizenship. Others were simply looking for better pay and a new adventure. Unfortunately, their service and bravery did not immediately result in recognition or equality. Which, years later now, we've learnt was the wrong way to do things, wasn't it kids? So we know that treating people, whether they had dark skin or Aboriginal background or any other background, is exactly the same as treating a person with white skin. So we're all Australians, we all fight for the same rights and for the same country that we live in, which is called Australia. And that's the way it should be. All treated equally. Kids, I hope you've loved this book. I hope you've learnt lots. And I hope you enjoy learning lots more about Indigenous education and Aboriginal culture. Certainly, the things they've done, like fighting for our country in war. We'll see you on another Aussie episode very soon. Until then, stay keen. Hey kids, did you have lots of fun today watching Aussie? I hope so. Did you know that we've got a heap of Aussie episodes on our YouTube channel? If you haven't already, go back and have a scroll through. I reckon you'll find some others that you absolutely love. And while you're there, why don't you hit subscribe? That way you won't miss out on any of our new videos that we bring out. We'll see you again soon, kids. Until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Ozzy, 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 Oi! Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of...